Headlines. We're going to be talking about the local theater scene. And we have two special guests. We have Betsy Cruz Craig, who is going to be the new artistic director at the Pear Theater in Mountain View. Yay. <laughs> You've probably seen her on stages all over the peninsula as an actor. And we have Jeannie Smith, who's one of our theater critics here at the Weekly, and is also a director and general theater expert. So thanks for joining us. And we've thanks. worked together a lot. Yes, a lot, I didn't even realize lot. your long history. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I guess, Betsy, if we can start with you, if you could tell us a little bit about what being the artistic director at the pair actually, <laughs> what does that actually mean? You know, it's funny because everybody keeps asking me and I'm like, well, where should I begin? <laughs> Sounds like you're the boss. But. Yeah, it, it is. But the thing about theater is it's highly collaborative. Um, probably one of the most collaborative businesses you can run. And, and that's the interesting thing about being an artistic director, particularly for a small organization, is that you have to deal with both the artistic side and the business side. And at the pair, we don't have a managing director handling the business side. So I would say that the number one responsibility that I have right now is managing people. Um, and as any good farce, there's a number of characters in our cast of players. <laughs> And everybody has a different, you know, intention and agenda, and so that's fun. Um, figuring out my my way of, of of dealing with people and making sure that that the decisions that get made all are geared toward the artistic integrity and the success of the theater. Um, so that being said, you know, I work with choosing a season, um, and one of the first things that I wanted to do as artistic director was choose our season earlier. Um, it's been something that. You know, the, the, the series of events that go into picking a season are, are difficult because you've always got a lot of people who want to express their opinions and who are really motivated to either direct a certain production or to act in a certain production. Um, and I wanted to start that conversation very, very early. And so we've started it a couple months ago already for the 2018-19 season um, because one of my biggest goals as artistic director is to get that season done by the end of January. And that's, it, it's just going to make our lives so much easier and really exciting because when I came in to um, interview for the artistic director position, one of the things we had to do was pitch a season, which was like, oh, what? <laughs> it's, you know, completely overwhelming to do just as a single individual. Um, but I ended up loving it and came across some incredible uh, pieces that I'm so excited to hopefully get the rights to and to bring into the pair. Did you have to think about like, is there a theme? Over well, and that's or? it too. You know, if you look at um, our our season for this year, you know, I, I couldn't really derive from that one specific thematic. You know, if you look at Palo Alto Players last year, they did from page to screen, I think oh, yeah. it was, mm -hmm. where it was all films that are plays that um, translated to the cinema, which is really kind of interesting. Um, and, and yeah, it's like, do you want to do that? Do you want to play into that kind of cliche of having to have a thematic thread line through? Or do you want to just make the thread line pieces that are um, filled with artistic integrity? Or do they explore gender and race? Um, are they political? We tend to do at the pair a little bit of each. Um, one thing that we're doing that's new this season, 2017-18, is we're bringing back a <gasps> musical um, in the form of a musical review. Um, o Coward, Noel Coward's O Coward, which is a musical review focusing on the humor and the music of Noel Coward. I did it 20 years ago, and so did Diane Tasca, and we're co-directing it, and I'm in it. And I have always loved it because it's really now a style piece. It's, it's period style, and it's, you know, very highbrow and filled with it's hard to beat Noel Coward it is it is it is and for me yeah. that music was so smart yeah. and he has a song um, which is in O Coward called Sail Away which to me is, oh, yeah. is up in my top 10 favorite pieces ever so I'm really excited about that mm -hmm. very different for our audiences but it's our new space um, we just did uh, a new original production What You Will which was written by uh, Todd Gutman a local playwright and directed by Will Brown, who's the artistic director of Arabian Shakespeare Company. And uh, they did the show in the round. And our new space is a flexible black box. 
And it was so exciting to walk into that theater and see the space used to its capacity to to you know yeah. to, to show off its its chops, right? And that's one of the things that I'm really excited to explore as artistic director is really maximizing the way the space can be used because it is a bit of a theater gymnasium. Mm -hmm. So it'll be exciting to see what happens. I want to ask you more about the upcoming pair season. Sure. Maybe I'll turn to Jeannie before that. Um, if you have any of some of the other theater companies, productions coming up this autumn that particularly caught your eye or that you're... Looking forward to. We on the peninsula are so blessed mm -hmm. with so many excellent theater companies and kind of, you know, the, the gem of theater works being here as our anchor as a professional company. Um, but even companies like Palo Alto Players have really been stepping up their game the last few years. And they're doing a production... Uh, this fall called the Millions, uh, no, the Million Dollar Quartet, Quartet. Um, with actors apparently who will be playing Elvis Presley and Johnny Cash and Carl Perkins and Jerry Lee Lewis. So that promises to be really interesting. I have a friend who did it on Broadway. And then, of course, they're going to, you know, blow it out of the water with Peter Pan as kind of a holiday. <laughs> show so we're looking forward to the flying oh, and all yeah. of that um the pair has one coming up for their holiday show which also has million in the title the millions production of a christmas carol and that's an original play by james cope who brought us super villain it's kind of like geeks versus zombies, geeks versus zombies. By him yeah it has so become that, yeah. we are looking forward to laughing hysterically at whatever he comes up with for that. Um, but also Enemy of the People, which is a political drama from Ibsen that is very timely and talks Incredibly about timely. industrial pollution and corruption and collusion and all of that. So that promises so to be good. Majority not always... Wisest. Yeah, and yeah. Um, and then of course, um, Los Altos stage is also putting on a classic that is contemporary political piece um, in the Crucible by Arthur Miller, and that's going to be directed by Jeffrey Lowe and promises to have a stellar cast. So I'm really looking forward to that too. one as well. Um, and then Theater Works, they've, you know, got an amazing lineup for the fall, too. They've got this new romantic drama called Constellations. And oh, it's a two-person yes. show. Uh, and what caught my eye was the description of it as nerds in love. <laughs> And it's a beekeeper and a cosmologist yeah, who get together. Right so alley. that sounds fun. fun. Um, and then they're going to pull out all the stops with their big world premiere musical of a new Stephen Schwartz adaptation of The Prince of Egypt. And remind our viewers, Stephen Schwartz, what's his very um, impressive? Yeah. Well, resume. Wicked, of yeah. course, oh, yeah. comes to mind. I can't He's remember just, what the some of his early Godspell, right? Oh, Godspell. Godspell. And um, I can't remember. Did he do Pippin? Where's my phone <laughs> <laughs> to look it up? I don't know. He's had several. He had uh, another nice. one that <laughs> premiered at Theater Works, and now the name of it has escaped me. Um, oh yeah. But he's a local favorite, and so I'm sure everyone's going to want to see this new Prince of Egypt. And it's going to go through a series of changes, so we'll be able to say we saw it first, and then it's going to have its, its big debut in Denmark <laughs> next year. Maybe it'll be yeah. the next Hamilton. Yeah. You, you never know. know. So you never know. Um, and then... Of course, they like to pull out all the stops for their holiday show, and they're going to do a stage adaptation of Around the World in 80 Days. Yeah, I was love. trying to imagine. <coughs> yeah, that be with the balloon. I just <laughs> think, I can't wait I love to that see story. what they do for the balloon. Um, 
the one that's opening the pear season should be good too. It's called In the Next Room. And it takes place in a Victorian era when... Mm -hmm. uh, At the dawn of the age of electricity. Yeah, so uh, women were treated with vibrators for anxiety. <laughs> there was a wonderful film years ago called Hysteria that covered the same issue. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, it's funny. There's a tagline saying electricity can do a lot more than light up a room in our, in our description of the show. But the script is wonderful. The story is really great because it, it doesn't just explore that, but, but so, female relationships right. and, and finding your sensuality and, and being able to find your, your voice in that. And it's by Sarah Rule, and it's now what? widely Her considered. Name is familiar to me. Am I? What am I trying to? This clean do? house. Clean house is, is her another big... one that she's well known for. In the Dead Man's Cell Phone. Oh yeah, I, I saw that. At um, so that's but yeah. in the next go. room is considered one of her best because it's a historical subject, but she really brings it into. A contemporary context. It's a it's a beautiful script. Every time I I, I see a scene or I, I read it again, I, I get something new out of it, which is mm -hmm. rare. And I, I really like it the way it deals with female relationships. Yeah. So that I'm looking forward to a lot of these different shows. Oh, Dragon also has one that's based on a classic, but it's contemporary. It's called the. Further Adventures of Hedda Gabler and Dale Albright, who's another local favorite director, uh, is directing it. And it's a sequel to um, Ibsen's Hedda Gabler. <laughs> and it's One of my favorite Hedda, plays. Hedda in Purgatory, and she meets up with all these other like bad women like Medea and can I audition um, for this play? <laughs> <laughs> and it's billed as a comedy, oh, so fine. I'm looking forward to that. I feel one. like I'm always singing the praises of Dragon, particularly because I love how they open up the space for you know so many new yeah. artists and, and different types of pieces. There's, There's a one woman show coming up on Monday, March. Yes, Hazel I interviewed team. her. I'm, yeah, I'm going. I'm, Me too. I'm so excited to see it. They have that, that Monday that. night series. Yeah. They have their second yeah. stage series. Comedian, like late, um, new late night series. There are stuff. lots of opportunities yeah. for artists to take advantage of yeah. the space. Is it's the pair, wonderful. Is the pair thinking about... Yeah, it's one of the things that um, in this new advent of me coming on board is starting conversations about co-productions and uh, I've in conversations with a couple of uh, gentlemen about a cabaret um, you know, again, I think it's it's definitely part of something that I want to bring into the pair is finding more ways to develop community partnerships, not just with artists, but also with people who are, you know, um, connected and somehow thematically to some of the things that we do. One of the things that we were talking about um, at the pair was doing a shared season focusing on the work of Sam Shepard, who recently died. Just because it's it's difficult for a theater company to produce an entire season of a single playwright's work, although some people do it. Signature Theater Company in New York City um, focuses on the work of one playwright every year. But to a community partnership with other theater companies where maybe we could partner with, say, Dragon or City Lights or Los Altos Stage, offering theater patrons the opportunity to see a mini season of Shepard's work. And wouldn't it be nice if it was like, you know, one company did one in September and the other yes. company did one in November. And so yeah. it was like uh, actually, through the whole season. Me, I wanted to ask, I mean, obviously there must be some competition between theater companies because competing for audience or cast or funding. Mm -hmm. But I always see like in programs, you know, it'll say thanks, special thanks to Palo Alto players or whatever. So how does that? It's, it's really interesting that you say that. And, and I know that, I, and I'm, I know I'm, I'm, I'm showing my, my green ways here as artistic director, but I don't see it as a competition because I feel, you know, my, my strongest feeling is that if people come to see theater, if it's at the pair, fantastic. If it's at Palo Alto players, great. We all offer things in a, in a slightly different way. Everybody has a slightly different voice. It's a very different experience to go to a show at the Dragon than it is to go see a show at City Lights. 
And so I think that we all benefit by trying to find ways to cross promote each other. I just saw a great thing that came across from Palo Alto Players was promoting Broadway by the Bay's production. Oh, yeah. And I, I feel like, um, and I've talked with Patrick Klein, the artistic director, about trying to pair um, pair, <laughs> no pun intended, <laughs> in the future, trying to find ways to help each other. Palo Alto Players has been incredible for us. They always loan us props and costumes, and, and we're good friends. And I feel I'd like to continue building those kinds of relationships with the other small theaters, because if one wins, we all do. Because, you know, we want, we want people to come to the theater. We want, you know, it, we want them in droves, not in dribbles. Right. And so I feel like the more we can find ways to work together, the, the better for everybody. You know? And it's also, <clears throat> the theater community in the Bay Area is so close-knit. And everyone's working at or performing mm -hmm. at so many different theaters. And you all get connected. And so many people know oh. everyone. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, oh, we really need such and such. Well, Los Altos has yeah. one, you know. It's been or great Players that way. has one, or go borrow from it's the pair. Yeah. And as so far as actors a, go, you know, if the show is of, good, they come. You know, yeah, they, they, yeah. There's and there's so many. We have we have such an incredible pool of talent. Yeah. And and it's in terms of theater amazing. works being professional, the, the level of acting that. Um, I've had the wonderful blessing to work with actors that we're very professional. It's a professional level, you know, very experienced. But we, you know, we can't afford to live as actors in the Bay Area, so we all have other jobs. Yeah. Um, a lot of us would probably, you know, love to just do full-time theater, most of us. Um, but here in this area, it makes it impossible. <laughs> well, before we wrap up, I wanted to ask you each um, one last question your dream show to do if you had unlimited budget or the rights what would be a pick you either to act in or direct <laughs> <laughs> or one of one of your dreams that's really hard there's so many that's hard can i have two sure <clears throat> i have two actually <sighs> um uh, well, I've always wanted to do the Scottish play, but especially recently. <clears throat> so that's, that's and Jeannie knows I really want to do that yeah. too. But that wasn't my, one of my two. But that's my third. <laughs> and then uh, I actually have musicals that I love, like West Side Story or uh, A New Brain, or you know, New Brain. I've thought of that. Yeah. So I'm glad that the pair is getting back into doing musicals, at least reviews. Yeah, I'm hoping Let's I can see where it goes. <laughs> kind of um, my way in there. I would love to act in A Doll's House Part Two. That's on Broadway right now. It's a oh, um, role yeah. that I I'd love to do A Doll's House as well because Janet McTeer McIntyre did it. Another six foot tall. Redhead. It's just a wonderful, wonderful piece. Um, I directed it did you at really? the pair years ago. Without me. Yeah. Um, and the other one is <laughs> Paula Vogel's Indecent, um, which is also playing on Broadway right now, which I am just really fascinated by. Um, and then I have one more, and I'm, I'm really hoping to do it at the pair soon, is a show called Wolves, which is nine oh. young women um, on a soccer field. And it gives me, um, I, I work with young people, and to have nine young females in a theater space together, I, I've got chills. It just, to me, that play offers so much to an audience and for a group of performers. I, I have to do it at some point. Well, sounds like we have a lot to look forward to <laughs> in the upcoming seasons and years and the various theater companies. So, okay. um, that's it for Behind the Headlines this week. Um, if you want to subscribe to our webcast, you can click below or follow us on social media. And you can read all our coverage at Palo Alto Online. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us.